All right, guys, we're going to do this cute little hummingbird with watercolor pencils. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here to welcome you to your creativity. We're going to do this fun little watercolor pencil hummingbird on 140 pound cotton watercolor paper. I'm getting started right away because I know a lot of people after the fact come in and they go, why is she talking so much? So we're going to just jump right in. I have a image for you right up here. And if you want the traceable, this little drawing right here is available on my website. The link is down below and the link is in the chat also if you're interested. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Make sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. I am going to hold that. Yay. What I want to do is go ahead. I'm going to draw my hummingbird in because I just find it this is a very simple little guy to do he is basically just like the shape of a pear with a couple triangles coming off the sides and a triangle going up for his beak and i am really excited so as you can see in the picture right up here in the corner He's a little bit up from the bottom. I'm doing this on six, uh, four and a half by six piece of paper. You can do it much bigger. The bigger you go, the more detail you have to put in. And I was keeping this one pretty impressionistic. I'm using a burnt ochre pencil to draw in because if you look at that picture, he does not look green, does he? But he's got his little sloping tummy and he comes up to his head. Now I made that way too high. And it's a little bit light. I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. Kind of like this, sort of like a peanut. All right. So guys, if you uh, come in and you have any questions, my husband, Mark is, uh, on the chat but he's over in the other room so if he uh, sees any questions he's going to come over and let me know <laughs> so basically we have this sort of peanut shape and then about halfway down right about where his neck color goes I'm going to put just a little line to remind me that's where the color going up his head is and this is basically the top of his head. So I'm going to put the little triangle coming up for his beak. And he's got a, almost like a bib, like a, like a baby bib on. There we go. And I'm drawing this all in with the watercolor pencil. I'm using the Arteza Expert watercolor pencils just because that's what I have. I'm going to take a triangle coming off the edge here. And it's got sort of an out of focus edge on the bottom of that wing. Like that. And then this other wing, it's a little bit thicker. It's coming right up from his shoulder and going up and tips out just a little bit, but it is still a giant triangle. That's all it is. We've got the fluffy feathers here at the bottom. And then if you hear any sounds of somebody bumping around, my husband decided to come into the studio with me. Say hello. Hello. There you are. All right, guys. Hey, if anybody's out there and you want to share, click the share vi this video button and let your friends know that this is going on. If you share on Twitter, 
that's a, uh, a great place. I did not get my sharing done because I was over watching the art Sherpa doing her hummingbird. But see, now we've got our pretty little hummingbird dropped in and his flower just barely sticks in the top of this. If you look at that reference picture and I'm just taking a fuchsia colored pink and making some little petals, maybe a little bit pointier than I did last time. And we're drawing this in first to get the lay of the land and to know where I don't want to put my, my background. So can everybody hear me okay? I, I haven't uh, seen too many, all right. Mark said that everybody can hear me. Actually, he didn't say it. He just put a thumbs up in the air over the monitors because <laughs> he's on the back side here. All right. I'm going to put in now. I know you can't, you can't really see the flower yet. There. Now you can see where I put the flower. And I just have him sitting on top of this little book because it made it easier to keep my pencils. I'm going to go ahead and put in the background. We're going to do this fun Tuscan sun yellow. And I am laying the pencil on its side and just putting this color down and working it around my bird. I don't worry about any places where I went over with the pencil. Uh, when I was drawing the bird because that will just melt right into the background. I love how these pencils, when you lay it on its side like this, it goes down so smoothly. Don't take your pencil and scribble straight down on the tip. One, it wears your pencil off a lot faster and it digs into the paper. And you don't want to dig into the paper because if you um, do that, it doesn't dissolve as nicely and, and you can't get it to move around as well. So back to just laying this down. I'm going to take a couple different colors of green and lay some green on here also. And just like regular watercolor, the watercolor will go only where you get the paper wet. So I'm not going to get the hummingbird wet and I'm not going to get the flower wet yet. I will get those in just a couple minutes. This is actually a very fun and easy type of program, program, process. There we go, process. Interesting how different words will pop into your head. <laughs> totally unexpected. All right. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys can hear me. All right. So now I want to take a couple different greens. I'm going to take this uh, lime green and I'm going to work a bit of that down here, right on top of the yellow. We're doing color mixing right on the paper. And this green is really going to just tone the yellow. It's not going to change it that much. But I want some of it in here. And then I'm going to take, I believe this is the spearmint green. And I'm going to work some of that right up here at the top more. get a little bit of a darker shadow of green up in here. And now I might do this differently than other people. You know, you, you figure out your way of doing it that works for you. And I am sharing the way I figured out works for me. I think it will work for you also. All right. I'm so glad to see people are showing up. I did get right into this, started right on, because 
I'm sort of jumping in on my husband's day, his daytime, or what would be the time that you would have like after work. He has it before because he works a swing shift. And he has so kindly offered to help me out with these live shows like this. I hope Thursday's working out for you guys. Uh, it works out better for us in our schedule. I'm going to go ahead now. So right now it doesn't look like much, but we're going to take, let's see. Where's my paper towel? Honey? Oh, no, I found it. <laughs> I was like, honey? <laughs> All right, so I am just taking this wet, this uh, water brush. It's a handle, plastic handle that's hollow, that filled with water, and it just has a brush tip on the end. It's starting to get a little bit frayed. I'm not worried about it too much, though, because, you know, I really push it, push it around and make it make it go flat and do things that it probably wasn't intended to do. I'm going to work right up close, but not go all the way into the little hummingbird. And I'll do the same thing. I'll work up close to the flower, but I won't go all the way in. But I want to get that background worked around it. But you see how you get this great fun payoff. Now I'm sort of working this in a linear way so that way I can get kind of a impression of some leaves and things in the background. We're going to throw some out of focus throw throw a little bit of out of focus flowers down in here. I hope that this is something that you will try. You can do this with any kind of water media, actually. My friend Cinnamon's doing it with a with acrylic paint. She's doing her own hummingbird with a magnolia. I'm doing mine with watercolor pencil, but you could do this with ink tents. It's as long as you know that once it's dry, it's you're not moving the paint around anymore, which can be a big bonus. You know, not moving the paint around anymore once it's down works out really well. But this is one of those cute little flower bird pictures that people seem to like. I hope that this drew you in, made you want to watch. Or was it just because I was going to be on? <laughs> I know I have some very, very dedicated community members who watch all of my videos, and I so appreciate you. I appreciate the people who go back and, you know, watch previous videos from years past. I've been noticing a few of few more of my older videos have been starting to get a few more some more views because they're they're back in the uh, colored pencil and uh, pen and ink and people are starting to be interested in that more on my channel again, which is making me really happy because that's what I really want to be doing. I want to be doing this. Decided that, yes? Allison, Allison Time in Texas says, taking a break for a cup of hot tea and happened upon this live feed. So it sounds like a new person. Well, hello yeah. there, passing time. Thank you for being here. I'm glad that, glad that you stopped in. I really... I'm trying to do a live feed every week. I've been, the last four weeks, it was on Fridays at noon. I've shifted over to Thursdays at 11. That's Pacific time. So two hours off of you in Texas. But this is just, I'm still just, I have a bit of a leak in my handle. Oh, probably if I screwed the screwed it together it would work better there we go I'll just pick up some of that water 
But right now I'm just getting that background in, working up to the little bird. Just a very natural little background. And because I laid the pencil in on its side, I'm able to get the color to flow and dissolve. And I need a little bit more of that darker green right down here. Or, hmm, let's see, maybe we'll just take a brighter orange color. Coral, put a little coral. I'm looking at the, the reference. And I'm just laying this down right in the wet paint. It looks kind of scribbly, but I'm not scribbling hard. And I will be able to get this to melt in with my brush. Basically, I was just toning that yellowy green tone with a bit of that corally color just to give me some thicker paint so I could make a little bit more of a background. Definitely going to dry this. Want to make sure that I've got that all dissolved up there, though. You just said she likes the color pencil oh thank you would you like to see me do some uh, doodle gems again now that I have a little bit more uh, understanding of how to film them and <laughs> Serendipity lighting so she found a corner here in the hospital with Wi-Fi oh Jan nice to have you here I'm so happy that I could bring a little bit of creativity into a possibly stressful time. She had a blanket and hot tea right now. This is really pleasant. Oh, there you go. I could use a blanket and, well, actually, I have hot coffee. I need to take a sip of my coffee before it gets cold. <laughs> yeah, Mark just said, too late. It is. It's it's cold. <sighs> yes, you've drank a lot more of your coffee than I have. All right, I am going to dry this really quick, and I'm using the uh, Ranger Heat It tool. This one was purchased in 2017, and it is a good one. Some of the ones, some of the ones are. Um, that are newer are not working as well for people. Oh, yeah, I remember the peacock gem. That was a lot of fun. Over on my Patreon, I just released a uh, coloring sheet for my patrons that is of a whole peacock. I may have to do another one here for the channel, too. There we go. Nope, still a little damp. Yes. All right. <clears throat> See more ge gemstones and peacock colors. Okay, I, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> All right, so I am going to take that um, burnt ochre colored pencil again and start putting in the color on this little hummingbird. And this little guy, you know, most hummingbirds seem to be, you know, well, a lot of hummingbirds that we have around here are mostly greenish toned. But when they're flying, they're just sort of a blur. <laughs> and I am coloring this in, just like coloring in a coloring book almost. Knowing that my colors are going to... My water brush just fell down. Ugh. I changed my table up here and I actually have a slanted board. So if it doesn't stay in exactly the right place, things fall off. Chris 
Or Shanna. But, but that... Shanna! Yay! <laughs> yeah, Shauna, you uh, have been a bright spot on my Instagram. Thank you. I, I love all of your comments. All right. And then he has a little brown cap on top here, right by his beak. And his eyes, I will put in with the black pencil for now, but I will be possibly putting it in with a, or this isn't black. Oh, he's getting his eyes with amethyst purple. I thought I had black. I'm putting his eyes, his eyes are very much right on the sides of his head. And that way I know where his, his color goes because the color goes under his eyes. I am going to use the black Arteza real brush pen to put his eyeballs in because I want his eyeballs to be fairly crisp. So I'm using the amethyst purple to put in a bunch of his little feathers on his bright flashy chest. So in and out, so are the Arteza watercolor pencils fairly soft or are they the same texture as regular color pencils? Are they, they the same with pencils? Um, watercolor pencils are in general softer. They have less of the, they don't really have the same amount of wax in them as regular colored pencils. I'd say um, many people, my, one of my nieces, she absolutely loves to color with watercolor pencils instead of using regular uh, pencils. So. Less breaking. Um, you know what? I haven't sharpened any of these yet. Watercolor pencils, you tend to sharpen less. So that part, I'm not, not sure on yet. <laughs> now I've, um, so the pink color I was using, I went back to the fuchsia. I'm trying to use the same colors. So I will probably use a bit of that coral over, actually throw a little bit of that coral here. I'm going to put some flowers in. Yes. Like hybrid areas. Yes. And you get to that point. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can, if it's if it's dry, you can actually use a kneaded eraser and lift some. You can't lift it all the way off. And some colors are more staining than others, even when they're dry. But you can. You, know, you can change it up a little bit. This one here is the Espresso Brown. I'm going to start putting in a few of his little shadowy spots. And you notice I'm still doing this dry. And I'm going to selectively wet as I'm going along. And if I need to go back in and bring back some brightness of white, I can use the Signo Uniball uh, pigma pen, uh, pigment pen. This is white and it is the UM-153 broad tip. So the tip is fairly big. Hello, hello. Nice to see you, Nala and Gina. Woohoo. Always fun to have friends that have been here before and new friends show up. I appreciate you all. So doing this as a, as my job, I am really, really fortunate and I love getting to share my artwork with you guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
This is the Sienna Brown. It's sort of in between the, the burnt ochre and the um, espresso. The Sienna is sort of between those. And I'm going to color around under his bib and then go back in with the lighter color again. And then I have a peaches and cream that I used on his chest in my first one. And I liked how that worked. So I'll do that. Put a little bit of that up here in his wings also. Spread your colors around, use them in multiple locations because then the whole thing goes together better. Set those down, grab my water brush. Thank you guys so much. Oh yeah, if you haven't already yet, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. It helps YouTube know that this is a video that you like because YouTube will share my video with people who click the thumbs up and people who like videos the same way that people who liked my video like. <laughs> it's crazy. I know. All right. I am going to go ahead and I'm starting up here in the dark area and just touching it and melting that color, working it down and around. But I'm sort of staying to the outside edges to start off with. Just like this. Looks like his looks like his little body is swinging. He's he's got his little flight pattern going here. And by working from the inside towards the outside edges, you can keep some of that definition without him losing all of his uh, fun funkiness. Now, you can. Take a paper towel and lift off with these colored pencils. See? So if I get this all wet right here and go, ooh, I didn't really want to do that so much, I can lift out. I know a lot of people like to see the lifting. It's fun. There we go. I'm going to work a little bit up into his bib area. And before I go in and work on his head, I'm going to come out here and work on his wings. I'm going to pull that darker color all the way out to the tip. So you saw what happened there. So I didn't put the color all the way out here on the tip of this bird on his wing. I put the color closer to his body and then just pulled it out and worked it to the edge. I'm going to do the same thing under the edge of his wing right here and pull it out towards the tip and then just pull down into those feathers. You can get a lot of detail for very little work. And you can push the color back I like the thickness of this paint from these pencils. A lot of people who are traditional watercolorists may not, but I'm enjoying it. All right, so I'm going to blur that edge just a little bit right along the edge of the wing because his wings are actually in motion. The entire time he's floating in the air, his wings are in motion. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna try something. Ooh, look at that. We're gonna go over here to this wing now doing the same thing, getting it wet and pulling it out towards that back, towards the tip. All the way out to the tip of his wing. 
and then do the same thing underneath. I'm trying to, I've got something that's wiggling on my desk and it taps, makes this tapping noise. So I'm very sorry if there's a strange little tapping noise coming through every once in a while. There we go. And now I want to work those bottom feathers of his wing. Just up into that edge. Again, we want it to be blurred out, but we want him to have a certain amount of definition also. It's a dance. It's a complete dance. All right. So I might lighten that up just a little bit. Boom. Just like that. Gina wants to know if that was a, a, using an Arteza journal or something else. Oh, I just have the, um, it's a piece of the Arteza paper that is just taped down to a, a cheap, this is just a, a $5 journal from the craft store. I uh, just have it taped down onto that just because that's what I had at hand. So the, I am painting on watercolor paper. It's the, let's see, it's the Arteza 100% cotton, 14 sheet pad. And it was the nine inch by 12 inch, 140 pound. It's still 140 pound, but I cut it down to four and a half by six. So for a, it sounds a little expensive on the website. You know, it's like $20 or something for 14 sheets of paper, which is kind of expensive, but they're always running sales and there is a 10% off coupon code down in my description field that gets you 10% off your whole purchase. So that helps you out. And now Arteza did send me these uh, pencils and paper a little while ago to use for a review video. Oh, well, thank you, Jan's nurse. You take, take really good care of her. She's a really good friend here on my channel. I really appreciate her being here. And Gina wants to know if you heard Martez about the acrylic painting. Um, I have sent an email and they will be getting back to me, I'm sure. So I'm going to go back in now and get his bright, colorful chest. I want to do the, I'm going around and just doing the dark color of purple now. I'm just getting it wet. I will be blotting some, but I want to leave some of that lighter color pink for just a, in just a minute. We're actually really close on this one, guys. This is moving right along. I'm going to blot because I want some of those areas to have that darker purple, but I want the tone of the purple too. <laughs> Pros make it look so easy. You know what? Um, there's a traceable on my website. So you don't have to be able to draw the picture. You can just print it off. And then really and truly, this is like coloring in a coloring book. If you liked being able to kind of layer your crayons, you can do this. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you can do this totally with uh, with regular watercolors. Uh, it is sort of the way I, I work with my watercolors, too, is I, I'm not a big 
washing it out type of watercolor person. <laughs> so now I'm just getting the top of his head wet, blurring in that brown at the top. Just softening out, making sure all of my paint has been dissolved. But see, by working in layers and working step by step, you can do this. Oh, I like this guy better than the than my sample one that I did. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I am so happy it's working. Now we're going to go ahead and really quick put in the flower. This flower, we'll go ahead and switch back. There we go. This flower has a lot of white in the middle of the petals. And it does have kind of that orangey, corally color to it. So I'm going to take some of this out here on the edges and just color lightly on some edges. By leaving some white in here, we will have the variations t showing up in our tones. You don't want to color it solid. If you color it solid, the ability to lift is great. Yes, it makes a huge difference. But if you leave your white in the flower, you'll get a lot of that glow without having to do a lot of going back in and fussing with it. I'm taking the uh, orchid purple in to use as deeper shadow in just a couple spaces, kind of where the petals would be in the back underneath, and maybe up here. We're going to get these wet now. And, you know, like I said, my brush is getting pretty frayed out. Let's see here. There, you can kind of see that over the edge. Yeah, it's, it's getting kind of frayed out. But I'm not too worried about that. As long as I start from the inside and work towards the outside first, then the color will work its way in. I am going to see if I can make that a little bigger. There we go. So I'm working on the inside edge, getting it wet, and then letting the color pull in towards the center. Leaving the highlighted one. So this one in the back right here, doesn't really get a highlight. Well, that's kind of hard for you to see, isn't it? There we go. I might have to put a little bit darker color in there for my deeper shadow. But I will go in really quick and lift out. And again, and like I said, if I need to put some of that bright white back in because it didn't, didn't hang out for me or I mushed right through it, I can put that with the white gel pen. These pencils are great for mixed media type work. So if you like to play in your journal, go for it. Have fun. So now I've pulled that down a little bit deeper into where that background area is. It's okay. We don't really have a white watercolor. You can go in with gouache if you want to But gouache is opaque. So it's an opaque watercolor and it, uh, let's see here. Where's my dark, dark purple? There it is. The amethyst. I want to get a bit more of a shadowy color down deep. Uh, gouache is an opaque watercolor, which is a lot of fun to work with. And this is where I can start getting really fiddly. 
So I'm going to try and just uh, <laughs> be a little bit restrained. Restrained. Uh-huh. <laughs> if any of the, if any of you have been around since I was doing the the acrylic pouring, you know that restraint is not necessarily my best suit. <laughs> but if the flower gets totally away from you, take some white gouache in or acrylic paint and just make your own. If you do gouache, you can take watercolor over the top of it. All right, I want to get the flowers on the side. Yes, the it's just plain washi tape around the outside edge. It is uh, paper tape with a light adhesive on the back. So you can, um, at the end here, we'll pull the tape off. I'm going to lay in a couple more colors. Sort of to make my little flowers on this side here and maybe a couple on this side. I'm just going to get it wet and then just tap it around. Now this is mixing with the undertone so it is complementary colors. If you mix it a little too much, you will end up getting kind of muddy. So you want to be careful about lifting the color in the bottom underneath up. But if you stick mostly to that yellowy area, look at that. Let me just get that in on this side here too. You can get those little abstract flowers and they're pretty much right where I wanted them to be. Bring some of that water right up to the edge so there isn't a little white edge. Soften his wean up right there. And I'm going to dry it. We're going to put some put his eyes in and the little touches with a white pen and we're we'll done. My gosh, so fast. So we're going to dry it real quick. Oh, well thank you so so much guys. You know, being able to share these kinds of pictures with you is really what makes me happy. I'm sorry if the um, dryer is a little bit loud. I try to talk over it as well as I can. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put his little eyeballs in. I'm just using the Arteza Rill Brush. This is the black or noir. His little eyes are on the side of his head. sort of, you know, give him a little impression of eyes there. And, you know, because this is a watercolor, I can go like this, put a little bit of the shadow, and I can get it wet. <laughs> Looking at the, at the sample, or at the uh, reference. couple little spots of it here and here. I think on his wing I'm not even going to get it wet. Oh, maybe I will. It's a little stark. It's a little bit stark. We'll get that wet. And this is where having my brush sort of frayed out is really helping. 
Look at that. The real brush pens are watercolor also. So I'm it's all watercolor. It's just different ways of being um, being utilized. What is it up here? The, the colors are really vibrant, yes. It's a lot of fun. All right, we're gonna throw the, the white pen on there. Nice thing about it, the, the brush pens dry really fast. And this little guy, he's got those little dots around his eyes. You can't really see it too too much in the uh, far distance there but you know the little dot feathers right around the eyes I think he's gonna get a few little spots here coupon code is still good. the coupon code is good through March 4th and that's uh, deliberately creative 7 for right now good through March 4th see now we can with the pen you can just put a little dot, few dots in and then tap it with your finger and it blends it right down. So then we've got the highlights. I want to get a few highlights here in on the petals to give that almost waxy kind of petal effect has like a sparkle to it almost. There we go. Bring some of that down a little bit. You can use this almost like a correcting pen. Look at that. Fast, fun, and easy. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I am going live on Wednesdays at 11, but then the videos stay up. Excuse me, Thursdays at 11 on uh, Pacific time. Click the notification bell. And I'm gonna sign over on this side. We're going to peel the tape off now. I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget to peel the tape. All right. So here we go. Tape peeling. So many people, this is their favorite part. They stick around for the tape, pe tape peeling. Because it's got such a satisfying effect. Now I'm taking the tape and I'm just... I'm just laying it down on my board because I can peel it right off. So, you know, it doesn't have to be wasted, wall, balled up, thrown away. Even though it rolls up on itself, you can just easily unroll it, stick it down. There we go. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I'm going to take me off the screen for a minute, too. There we are. What do you guys think? Did we do okay? I know this took a lot longer, but I was trying to make sure and give you all of the tips and tricks as we go along here. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you in the next video on the playlist that will be coming up as soon as I get it set up. Mm -hmm.